I got two problems for you today, and guess what year they were written in. All right, we'll start over here with the word problem. Wow, whoa, square root of three times positive integer decreased by the integer. Result is two tell that, oh, too many words. We know what to do with word problems, don't we? We turn them into equations because we're a lot more comfortable with equations than with words. So let's see, we'll call that positive integer x. So three times the positive integer, that is 3x. And then we take the square of that. We got 3x, that whole thing squared. We decrease by the integer, decrease by x. The result is 2010. All right, let's square that out. Take 3x squared, you get 3 squared times x squared, and that's 9x squared minus x is 2010. Now maybe you know the quadratic formula. Maybe you know how to factor quadratics. Well, I'm not going to do any of that fancy stuff. I'm going to do something simple. I'm going to do something so simple, you might even call it stupid. That's right. I'm just going to pick numbers, stick them in there until I find one that works. So let's just guess. I'm going to guess easy numbers like multiples of 10. Because, you know, if I put a multiple 10 over here, I'm going to get something that ends in 0, and that's nice. So I stick in 10. 10 squared is 100. 100 times 9 is 900. That's too small. Let's try 20. 20 squared is 400. 400 times 9 is 3,600. That's, that's too big. We're looking for the Goldilocks number. We want it just right. We want it right there in the middle. What's in the middle between 10 and 20? 15. Now, before we go multiplying it out, we can at least see that 15 might be right, because if you take 15 and square it, you'll get something that ends in 5. You multiply by 9, you'll still have something that ends in 5. And then when you subtract 15 from something that ends in 5, you get something that ends in 0. That's nice. So let's go ahead and stick 15 in here and see what, you, see what we get. Now, I don't want to multiply 9 and 15 squared. That's too hard. I'm going to do something easier. I'm going to go 10 times 15 squared and then subtract off the extra, the extra 15 squared. Fortunately, I do know 15 squared. That's 225. So we'll go 10 times 225, and then we have to subtract off the extra 15 squared, and 15 squared is still 225. I subtract off the 15 there. Let's see what this gives me. 10 times 225 is 2250. These two together are 240. 2250 minus 240, that's right. That's 2010. Now, how are you doing with that quadratic formula? Still not done factoring? <laughs> how about that? answer is 15. Now while you're sitting there with your quadratic formula and still multiplying all those numbers together and figuring out square roots, I'm going to move over here. I wanted the largest integer less than 2010, so it can't be that large. If I divide by 7, I get a remainder of 5. Divide by 11 or by 13, I get a remainder of 10. Hmm. Now I could try to set up equations with all these, these words and such, but Oh boy, maybe that'll work. I, I, don't, I don't see how, and I don't see some simple, stupid way to satisfy all three of these, but I do see a simple, stupid way to satisfy two of them, right? I can just start with 10. 10. If I divide 10 by 11, I get a remainder of 10. If I divide 10 by 13, I get a remainder of 13. If I divide 10 by 7, I get a remainder of 3. Ah, maybe I can find other numbers that are divisible, that leave a remainder of 10 when I divide by 11 or 13, and then keep testing them and see if I can satisfy this one too. Well, let's see if I can figure out how to find more to satisfy this first, to give us a remainder of 10 when I divide by 11. Well, if I start with 10 and I just keep adding on 11s, I'll get more numbers that leave a remainder of 10 when I divide by 11. If I add on 111, 211, 311, a zillion 11s, and then I divide by 11, the remainder will still be 10. Same goes for 13. If I add on 113, 213s, a zillion 13s to my little 10 here, and then I divide the result by 13, the remainder is going to be 10. So I want to add on something that's going to be a bunch of 11s or a bunch of 13s. I can add on 11 13s. Because 11 13s is the same thing as 13 11s. So when I divide this by 11, the remainder is 10. When I divide by 13, the remainder is 10. Very nice. So let's see what happens when we divide by 7. Well, I don't want to have to, well, this is 143. Right? 11 times 13 is 143. And when I divide 7 into 143, that's very convenient that this is just 3 more than 140. 140 is obviously a multiple of 7, so 
This leaves a remainder of 3 when I divide by 7. This leaves a remainder of 3 when I divide by 7. So when I add these together, I get a remainder of 6. I know that that's 6 more than a multiple of 7. So what I'm going to do here is it's more than a multiple of 7. This one is 3 more. This one is 3 more. So together there are 3 plus 3 is 6 more than a multiple of 7. And what I want to do is I, if I keep on adding 11 times 13s here, if I add on another one, when I divide by 11, still going to give me a remainder of 10 because these are going to go bye-bye. And when I divide by 13, when I divide this whole thing by 13, well, this is obviously a multiple of 13. I'm going to get a remainder of 10 still. That's good. So no matter how many of these 11 times 13s I add on, I'm always going to get a number that leaves a remainder of 10 when I divide by 11 or by 13. That's very nice. What happens when I'm dividing by 7? Well, this is just another 3. So now I'm 9 more than a multiple of 7. Well, that's actually 2 more than a multiple of 7. There's another multiple of 7 that's a little bit closer. But 2 is not 5, not even for very large values of 2. So I need to keep going. I'm going to add on another 11 times 13. That gives me another 3 more than a multiple of 7. So now I'm 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. That's 12. 12 more than a multiple of 7. It's also 5 more than a multiple of 7. I've got it. That's 5 more than a multiple of 7. So if I divide this number by 7, I'll get a remainder of 5. If I divide by 11, I'll get a remainder of 10. If I divide by 13, I'll get a remainder of 10. Yes! I've got my... Oh. I have an answer, but I don't know if it's the right answer. Because I want the largest integer, less than 2010, that satisfies all these. I've got an integer. And I could sit here and add all this up if I wanted to. But there might, there might be another one. There might be more. Now, how can I get to something here? If I keep adding on things. If I keep adding on these 11 times 13s, I get more and more numbers that leave a remainder of 10 when I divide by 11 or by 13. But now I've got to also look for numbers that leave a remainder of 5 when divided by 7. So if I keep adding on 7s to this number, I will get a bunch more numbers that leave a remainder of 5 when I divide by 7. So I want to add on 7s, or I want to add on a bunch of 11 times 13s, and I want to end up with the same number at the end. What if I add 7 of the 11 times 13s? I add 7 of those. Now look at this huge number. Now I know that this right here leaves a remainder of 5 when I divide by 7. So when I add this one, I'm still going to leave a remainder of 5 when I divide by 7, because this is a multiple of 7. And clearly, if I divide this by 11, I get a remainder of 10. If I divide this by 13, I'll get a remainder of 10, because these are all multiples of 13 out here. So this number will work too, but what's this number? I surely don't want to multiply this whole thing out. Ha! I've got something stupid I can do again. There are seven of these 11 13s. There's an eighth one, there's a ninth one, there's a tenth one. So I've got 10 of these 11 times 13s, and that's easy to multiply out. 11 times 13 is 143, so 10 of them is, 10 of them together gives us 1430. And that, we add it together, is 1440. Now, I know for sure there's not a bigger one, because I'd have to add on another 7 times 11 times 13, and 7 times 11 times 13 is way more than 700, so that'll go. If I added 700 onto that, I get something way bigger than 2010. So 1440 is my answer. There you go, I knocked off both of these 2010 problems without doing anything super clever, no magic formulas. Most of the steps I took here, they were all pretty simple. So simple? Yeah, I know. You probably call them stupid, but just remember, never underestimate the power of a stupid idea.